Let us honor our king. Blessed are the people who know the sound of the shofar. In the light of your countenance, O Yahweh, shall they walk. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshiyanu b'mitzvotov v'tzivanu, lishmoa kol shofar. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to hear the voice of the shofar. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Let's do the Shema, the Via Hafti, and let's bless our sons and daughters. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivod Malchu Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. They are hafta et ya will hekka, be called above ka, who be called nafshika, who be called me odeka. They hayu, ha debrim ha ele, ha sherin oki mitzvka ha yom al lebebeka, ha shinan tam lebebeka, beri barta bam beshiftika bebeteka, who blektika vaderek, who shak bika, who vikumeka. Ukshatam le old al yudeko, le hayu le tolefot be neneko, Uktavtam el mesazot be teko, Uvisha reko, le haftal reko kamoka. You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. All right, Tesher's going to lead our prayer. Abba, open their eyes to receive your truth and your shoes name. Amen. And let's all point our hands and join them and say, Abba, open their eyes to receive your truth. In Yeshua's name, amen. And all together say, by his grace, not one will be lost. Amen.
Y'all would stand, we'll do the blessing of the third portion and the Torah blessing, and then we'll get started. All together, you shall say before Yahweh your Elohim, I have removed the sacred portion from my house and also have given it to the Levite and the alien, the orphan and the widow, according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed or forgotten any of your commandments. I have not eaten of it while mourning, nor offered any of it to the dead. I have listened to the voice of Yahweh my Elohim. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven, and bless your people Israel, and the ground which you have given us, a land flowing with milk and honey, as you swore to our fathers. Amen. Amen. Barakud Adonai, humble rock. Baruch Adonai, humble rock, leolam ba'ed. 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 Baruch Adonai, humble rock, leolam Amen. Bless Yahweh the Blessed One. Blessed is Yahweh the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Yah, giver of the Torah. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Okay, let's go to Acts 19. We're going to start verse 1 probably do a part one and a part two to this uh, because I believe that before we even get back to the congregations, I wanted to bring this point out. So this is probably, like I said, going to be a part one, part two, but I named this one Idolatry and Economics because this is what is really happening in our time and season that we're in today. Now, you know, we went to, where's Wendell at? Is Wendell in here? Hey, there you are. I see you back there. Uh, he, had, he lost his grandmother, but we did get to go and uh, spend some time with his family, got to meet his family, and it was really awesome. So there was a few of us that got a chance to go. <clears throat> but in that, we also, on our way back, or on our way up there too, me and Arnold was talking about really what the father has been doing and, and what he placed in me in this Acts 19 and some of the things about the, the move of the Spirit. And then last week, I was going to teach on this, but Yahweh says, let me show you how this is going to work. Amen. So we had a, and he said, boy, it's just like, that's exactly what we talked about and how the Holy Spirit moved last week in a special way. Now, and I'm so glad that it did because we're going to cover, if I get there, we're going to cover about how signs will follow. But we're also going to have to cover where those who said, well, we cast out demons in your names. We laid hands on the sick in your name and we did this in your name. And he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So this is important in this days and times because if you don't understand how to, dis how to discern from a prophet to a false prophet, because it looks like both may be performing signs and wonders. But how do you know the truth? That's what this one is going to be about today, is to do that, because then we will get to the rest of the chapter uh, maybe next week. Okay, so here's what happens first. In Acts 1, I mean in Acts 19, verse 1, it says, And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth. Well, it's important to know who Apollos was. Apollos, he was a learned Jew. This is I get this from the IVP. He was a learned Jew from Alexandra and mighty in the scriptures, who became a believer and a teacher of Messiah. Okay? So Apollos is a good guy. He's one of some of the others, like Gaius and some of these other ones that we're going to read about later. These are people who accepted Yeshua, they heard the message, and they were compelled to teach the gospel. Okay, so here we have that Apollos was at Corinth. Paul passed through the island country, and then he came to Ephesus. So here again, you can see where Corinth is at. 
it's in Greece. It's part of Greece. So he evidently just either he walked on water, which I don't think he did, but he probably he boated across to Ephesus. So you see the connection of what's happening in this region. Okay, so he's left from Corinth and he's gone to Ephesus, and there he found some disciples. So now Paul is he's finding people. He's calling them disciples. Really what he's doing is, is he went there and he found people teaching about Yeshua. They were spreading the gospel in Ephesus and, uh, while he was at Corinth. So he goes there and he finds these people in this city. And if you remember, Ephesus was around 180 to 200,000 people. And we also know that there was a lot of paganism in all of these cities that are there. A lot of mixed worship. Verse 2, And he said to them, now, this is what Paul said to them. He's talking about Apollos and all of the others there. He says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no. And he said, we not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So now, but these are people who's saved. These are people who are teaching. These are people who are baptized with water. Okay? Understand this. I want you to listen. He said, verse 3, into what then were you baptized? Because he needed to know. I mean, that's a valid question. He sees them teaching about Yeshua. But you've got to remember also in this area, in two of these big cities, the Nicolaitans, the teachings of the Nicolaitans were there. So Paul is hearing them teach about Yeshua. So now he's having to ask them, who am I laboring among? I'm just not going to take it for granted that we're like, kind, like mind. So he's asking them these questions because the Nicolaitans were also teaching about Yeshua, among others, okay? So Paul, this is just conversation, is what he's doing here. And he said, into what you're baptized, and then they said to what? Into John's baptism. Well, that's a great thing. Into John's baptism... So it shows me here, now, John, Yochanan the Immerser, John the Baptist, he died, he was martyred before Yeshua was killed on Calvary, right? So you see that there's a baptism, so it's showing me that one or two things, don't know, one or two things, that either these people were, by being baptized in John's baptism, could Because John's baptism was about repentance and about Yeshua, the Messiah, that was to come. That's what that baptism was all about. About repentance. Because we're going to read it. He's going to tell you what it is. That's how come I know already. So anyway, <clears throat> but what Paul is going to mention is, is what have you done since Yeshua has come and he's died for our sins? So this is the question here. And he says, John's baptism, in verse 4, was a baptism of repentance. Telling the people to believe in the one who was to come. Now, that's, you understand the verb is there? Was to come. After him, that is Yeshua. So, it's showing you here that John's baptism was a baptism of repentance, showing that Yeshua was to come. Now what do we do that now Yeshua, that Yeshua has come? This is what he's saying. On hearing this, on hearing what he was telling, they were baptized now in the name of Yeshua. See, that's different. That's why we baptize in the name of Yeshua. And like I said, I've been wet so many times as I've been learning because when I was Baptist, I was born Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And then I was born in a baptized in the name of Jesus, 32 degrees. In, in a creek, because I said we got to be baptized in the name, and then we find that, that his name is Yeshua, not Jesus. So I got baptized in the name of Yeshua. This is it's conscious sake, and I think if some, you know, this is just as you get information. This is what that I've done, and so what you're seeing here is is that you see here then these disciples here that were teaching about Yeshua. Now they were baptized in the name of Yeshua. Look what it says next. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. Now, this is important. This is something, and I'm not going to go to Acts 8. Um, in 14 through 20, you can read it. This is something that happened with Peter 
and with Simon who tried to buy, you know, the baptism and Holy Spirit. This is one of these things. But it just shows you that something was happening. So this is not something, I just want to lock this in. Paul was not the only one that was ministering the gospel with signs following. Peter, James, all the other apostles, plus another good multitude of these people were ministering the gospel with signs following. This is where I'm going. Where we're heading here is this. We are to produce fruit, not signs. I'm telling you this up front. We're to produce fruit, not signs. But the, the signs should follow the good fruit. Because guess what? We're going to read in a minute. Some signs was following bad fruit too. And so what are you looking at? I'm, I, what I'm saying is this. Right off the bat, when we're, when we're talking about this, is a lot of times we like the thunder and lightning. We like the signs. If you're looking for signs, you're going to get in trouble. If you're going to be looking and following after signs, that's not where it's... That's, signs are supposed to be something that, that follows good fruit. But for us, we need to be looking for the fruit in one another, not the signs that's following. This is where we're headed with this because of Matthew and Mark where Yeshua was talking. Okay, and it says they were about 12 in all. And then it says this, And he, this is Paul, he entered the synagogue, and for three months he spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of Elohim. Now, he is reasoning, persuading, what he's teaching the gospel. He's teaching about Yeshua is the Messiah. He's not teaching Aleph Tob, and he's not teaching the gifts of the Spirit here. This, he's teaching about Yeshua. He's teaching the gospel and everything that comes with it. He's teaching about Yeshua. Verse 9. But when some became stubborn and continued in unbelief. This happens. It happened then. It happens today. It happens with us in our... This is why I've said so many times. Uh, I know that most people in here, your testimony for a lot of us is this. I was in a church. I was worshiping. Life was going. And then all of a sudden, something was stirring in me. The Holy Spirit started moving me, and I started seeing that some of these things are not right. And then all of a sudden, we come into this Hebrew way of thinking, and so we see it, we get excited, and we go to our best friends in the church, and we tell them, and they get real excited with us. Every time. And then they look at you like you got COVID. You know... They wear a mask. Is that not most of our testimonies? You're like, how? I mean, this is right out of the Word. And you would think that you were excited about it. If you could see it, you wanted to share that. And there you're, and look, guys, I'm telling you, these are best friends. I'm not talking about acquaintances. I'm talking about people you go out and eat with. You know, wherever restaurants is in your town, you were eating with and all of that. And then all of a sudden, you or shunned, or dropped like a hot potato, as we say down south, and all of these things happen. That's right. That's right. People that made you godparents, that's right. They're looking like, man, we need to redo that contract. I'm just saying, this is, this is a testimony that happens to us. So here it says that some became stubborn and continued in unbelief. Now, if he's going to the synagogue, who is mainly in the synagogues? The Jewish people are the children of Israel, but mainly Jewish people are there. Probably a few Gentiles may have been there. And then it says this, when they became stubborn, then something happened. They started speaking evil of the way. Maybe if somebody ever spoke evil of you whenever we started worshiping like we do. It said they started speaking evil of the way before the congregation. So then what did Paul do? He said he withdrew from them. He took his disciples with them, reasoning now daily in the hall of Tyrannius. All right, now this was a lecture hall. This was in Ephesus. You can look it up. 
there was no guy, there was this Ephesian who, who always lectured. This was his place of uh, teaching. He was not a believer or anything like that. But he allowed Paul to use this lecture hall. Now, it didn't say here every Shabbat Paul was lecturing here. It said the word daily. So does anybody in here know what the word daily means? Every day. Paul would work while Terenius was doing what he was doing in his own hall. Paul would work. And then once that was done, then he would let Paul use the lecture hall to start ministering the gospel every day. This is important. Because... We're going to see that Paul influenced, and we talked about it just a little bit last week. Paul influenced a lot of people, okay? Verse 10. So we now we know that he was doing it daily, correct? Do we all agree with that? Then what it says, this continued for how long? Do you think if you was ministering daily for two years, your message would get out? You know... Look what it says in the rest of that verse. So that all the residents of Asia. I want you all to stop right there. I want you to look at Ephesus. See where Ephesus is at? He was ministering two years daily in Ephesus. But what did the scripture say? It says, so that all the residents of who? Look where Asia is at. Him ministering there affected that whole region. You're talking about live streaming. But do you know one of the main reasons why he was able to affect all of that? Is because they had a pagan temple in Ephesus. And it was the temple of what? Artemis. And people from all over the world would go there to worship Artemis. And guess who they would get to hear? Paul. And Paul was able to influence the whole nation or the whole region, the providence of Asia. The Father led him to Ephesus for a reason. Two years ministering daily, because people would just, that was what they would normally do. They wanted to hear, there was such a mixture there, they wanted to hear the philosophers. Man, they would love to go hear the philosophers. You know, Smoke a hookah or something, you know, and just sit there and do the listen. What's going on? You know, that's right. It was a commercial center. That's right. They're going there to make money. Huge idolatry and economics was flourishing there. Paul goes there and he ministers daily there. You know, I thought about this. I said there was another man that I knew that in my day that's influenced a lot of presidents. That's influenced a lot of places all over the world. Anybody might, Billy Graham. I thought about somebody, but what did he do? He ministered uh, crusade after crusade after crusade after all over the place to where presidents would call him in to pray for them. So yes, a person can influence a lot of people. One person can influence a lot of people. That's right. You can see how these people can influence people. So Paul, by doing this for two years daily, now, sometimes we might sit here and say, well, why can't I be that influential? Well, for two years, get out there daily and then see what the results may be. But what happens is, is people don't know a lot of people because you're not out there. And then when you go out there, they don't know you, they're not going to listen to you. But see, Paul is there, so we're, we're talking about something, because I'm setting up something with the sons of Sceva here, okay? <clears throat> because Paul is out there daily. He's out there ministering to these people, telling them about the kingdom. So, so, it, so all the residents in verse 10 of Asia heard the word of Yahweh, both who? Jew and Greek. So it meant he influenced everybody, not just one group of people. Now let's go to verse 11. So now the scene changes here. And in the scene change, it says now, now 
Elohim was doing extraordinary miracles by the hand of Paul. Okay? Look what was happening. So that even the handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick. That's a lot of faith. That's just, that's no different than, you know, Yeshua's inside the house and they needed to get the sick man inside the house. So what did they do? They took the roof off. See, because they understood that the power of healing was there. These people understood at least this much that Paul had Yeshua's cell phone number. That's really, in our vernacular, that's, what it, they, that's a relationship because whatever Paul is doing, the Father is touching his ministry in his life because even the very garments and even anything that he was going, that's faith. Faith is not in Paul, but faith is in Yeshua as the healer. And this is what was happening. So we see that the handkerchiefs, the aprons that touched their skin, they were carried away to the sick. Look what happened here. Their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. This is important. I mean, we're just talking, we're not talking about somebody. You know what we're talking about? We're talking about a man who was faithful to preach the gospel. And he had the fruits of preaching the gospel, and because of that, signs followed. That's what happens. He wasn't out there doing some kind of show at the Hall of Tyrannius every week. Let me just go here. We got some love potion. We got this. We got an essential oil. Do three daps and, you know, and all that stuff. That isn't what he was doing. He was teaching the gospel. And because of that, Yahweh was saying, hear him. And by hearing him, signs are following. You see what's happening here? Signs follow because he was teaching the gospel. And the Father, because who was doing the extraordinary miracles? Verse 11, Yahweh is. Yahweh's the one doing the miracles, and Paul knew that. Paul knew, I have nothing, because guess what? Paul had issues. He couldn't get his own self healed. So he had issues, so it just showed you that Yahweh is doing the miracles here. Not Paul. Paul's just being used as a vessel. Verse 13, now some of the vagabonds, or let me stop right here. Uh, let's go to Mark chapter 16 before we go the rest of the way. Yes, Mark 16, 14. Like I said, we'll get through just a portion of this week and then we'll finish it out next week. Because this is important, guys. The reason why this is important, because our lives depends on this. Our lives depends on the gospel of Yeshua. Our lives depend on it because in that, by following His ways and doing what the Torah tells us to do, then He will allow us to be used by His Spirit to be able to have a word of wisdom or the word of knowledge or to have a gift of faith or whatever may, discerning of spirits. Heavenly days, we need the discerning of spirits operating in our life. Because there's a lot of good things. Look, there's bad things out there. That's not the issue with most of us. All you got to do is turn on the TV and look at the news. You can see the bad things. But when other people, there's some people that come that's really what we would call... Uh, Wolves in sheep's clothing can come out. We need to be able to discern that. Do you know that the majority of the time when we discern that there's a wolf in sheep's clothing is after we've been bit? After there's been a chunk or we lose an arm or get a lung knocked loose or something. That's usually when we realize and we wake up. What we need is, is we need discernment before somebody gets hurt. If a wolf comes in here in sheep's clothing, we need to know that before they hurt another sheep. That's where this discernment, this is where the gifts... But if we're so caught up into our own thing all the time, our own businesses, our own this and this and this and this, we're going to miss the very discernment of our own people that we, that we love. Because what happens is, is we're not looking at the fruit of the person 
and you know what I'm talking about. I can see right now things are going off in everybody's mind. I don't know who he's talking about. But you just see things, that, but you don't. Because what happens is, is you may be watching the signs. I've done this. I'm not sitting here saying anything. I'm learning this too, that I need to really understand the fruit of an individual. Does that fruit line up with Torah, not the signs of some maybe the good things that might be happening? Because you're, you're you know, they, there are signs that happens to both. But anyway, let's just let the Word explain this better than me. Verse 14, this is Yeshua. This is about a great commission. This is what he tells them. He said, Afterward he appeared to the eleven themselves, and they were reclining at the table. And he rebuked them for their unbelief. So he, he rebuked them for this reason, and of the hardness of their hearts, because they had not believed those who saw him after he was risen. Remember the, the story here. Now he, he rebuked them, for their unbelief and the hardness of their heart. Because he already told them that he was going to be raised up. And then when they told him that he was raised up, they didn't believe him. Do you know the reason why this is important? You know this word. Most people in here know this word. But what happens to us when something really hard hits us? Do we have unbelief in the hardness of heart? Or do we embrace it and be able to allow... What lesson can I learn from this? It's not easy. It's not fun. Nobody desires. But if you're going to go through something like that, the testimony is, is that you embrace it and you say, Father, show me what you want me to show. I'm here. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. You want me to lay here? I'll lay here. If you want me to be here, I'll be here. You know, teach me. Teach me the life lesson that you want me to know. That's the thing. That's not easy. I'm not telling you that's easy. But what I'm telling you is, is either you embrace it or do we have unbelief in the hardness of heart? This is the reality. This is what happened to the ones who walked with him for three years. You're either going to get bitter or you're going to get better. Listen to this. These guys walked with Yeshua for at least three years. I mean, they saw all the miracles. They saw Lazarus come out of the tomb. Probably sitting back there saying... Yahweh Elohim, I hope this works. You know what I'm saying? He's up there, and they're probably backing up. You know, like, is he going to make a fool of himself or what? He's fixing to, this man been dead for four days. Maybe one day, maybe I'd stand, you know, probably, probably every day he was dead, they probably was that, you know, 10 feet back. I don't know. But you, you know what I'm saying? But when somebody comes up there and they make, when somebody's lame and somebody's been blind from birth and you're seeing all these miracles happen, but yet, these are the same men. After they saw him on the cross, there was something came to me the other day. It has to do with senses. We are people, we're so ruled by what we see. And we can see something, and what's, what makes it a travesty is we can see it, but a lot of times we judge it by the way we feel or the way we think. And so many times men misjudge other people because of you're trying to judge them because of the way you think they were or the way you think they are or whatever. And here you sit here with a situation to where they saw Yeshua hang on that cross. They knew he was dead. But yet... He said that I was going to die. They didn't like it. He was raised from the dead. But because of that, they couldn't get past. Their faith, their faith couldn't get past what they saw. And so what am I trying to tell you here? Our faith, we better know that what this word says is true. I don't care what you see. Because if you can't believe this more than what you see, we're in trouble. Because you're, you can't discern the, the, you know, the, the gifts of discernment by the Holy Spirit is, how many times does your heart tell you one thing, but your, but your gut, I mean, not your gut, but your mind and all of that is telling you something else because fear, that's number one, fear. I, don't, I, I mean, I know it could happen for Mark, but I don't think it can happen for me. You know, how many times, well, why can't it happen for you? We're both believers. We're both children of Elohim. We're both sons and daughters. Why could it not happen for one and happen for another? You know, always ask, what are you teaching me? But don't ever say, what happened for him can't happen for me. That's a lie. 
Okay, that's fear talking. Where in the world am I at? Okay, Mark 16. Okay, verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world, after he rebuked them, and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. What is the gospel? Love Yahweh, love your neighbor, and Yeshua is the Messiah. Take care of the widows and orphans, and keep yourself unspotted from this world. That's the gospel. You go and you preach that. That's, that's what you're looking for. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. Just that simple. Verse 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. So see right here, now you're seeing the word signs, and I want to pick this up because of what happened in Acts. Signs are accompanying those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, and they will speak in new tongues. Yeshua is telling them this in, in, the, in the book of Mark. These same signs are, are what was accompanying Paul as well as the others. Verse 18, they will pick up serpents in their hands. Now, this is not about snake handling. But there was an individual who was gathering sticks, and he put sticks on a fire, and a serpent came out and bit him. That's right. Not only just bit him, he clung to him. And that was Paul. Here's a serpent that came out because you know what? Yahweh has a set time for you. And he has a set time for me. And that's just the way it is. He knows it's easier to, it's easier to count the hairs on my head now. Uh, you know, he can do it probably on one hand. But what happens is, is he knows everything about us. He knew me. He knew you before you were in the womb. That's what he says. And guess what? He knows on the day that we will lay our head to rest, or he'll know the day if we're alive and remain whenever the resurrection happens. He's in control of that. He knows that. Okay? So in Paul's case, when that serpent bit him, Paul shook it off. Why? Paul had enough discernment. He knew it's not my time. Now, this was a very, if you research this snake, they believe it was like the black mamba or a three-step snake. In other words, a snake that would bite you, and in biting you, you have about maybe a few seconds and you die. That's the type snake is what I've researched it to be. Swell up and you die. Now, I'm not going to read the story because you know the story. When that snake bit him, that was, was that a fruit or was that a sign? A sign, because they saw it. So what did the people around the fire say when they saw the sign when the snake bit him? He, that's right. He's under judgment from Yahweh. Or he's under judgment for the gods. He, in other words, he, is a, he must be a murderer. He's a bad person. See? What they saw. They didn't discern anything. They went by what they saw, and they made a judgment. But when he didn't die, then what did they say? He must be God. You see what I'm saying here? What happens? You can't trust. We can't. Don't trust your lying eyes. That's what I'm saying. What happens is, is you have people in one moment said he's a murderer, Judged him as a murderer because of that snake biting him. He didn't die and they called him a god. Hermes or Jupiter or Mercury or one of the gods. Just that quick. Yeshua, son of Elohim, four days later crucifying. Because of what they saw, they're not looking at the fruit. They didn't know Paul. If they would understand the fruit of somebody, that's why we... Tammy's dad always taught me this. He said, do not judge anything before the time. How many times has he ever said that? Like daily? You know, I mean, how many times? Do not judge anything before the time. Because usually you, 99% of the time, you're going to get it wrong. Because you don't know the backstory. You don't know. You have, to, you have to know the fruit of a situation before you can judge a fruit. I mean, to judge the situation, you have to know that. So I'm just bringing this out because just that quick they said he's a murderer. Next thing they think he's a god. Man, that's sort of quick shifting. But this is the way people is. Look, guys, in these end days, 
we have to know that the people who are out on the forefront speaking has the fruit of this word. Because there's going to be a lot of people out there speaking and doing signs and wonders that don't have the fruit of this word. And this is going to tell us if they're from of, the, of Yahweh or not. This is why this is so important. Okay? And then it says, If they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. If they hand, lay hands on the sick, that they will recover. Not maybe, but that they will recover. You have to believe that. It's the will. It's the way we think. So then Yeshua, after he had spoken these things, had taken up to heaven, and he sat down at the right hand of Elohim. And it says, And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message. Can you hear what I'm saying here? The message is not the signs. The message is not the gifts of the Spirit. The message is Yeshua and him crucified in the gospel. That's the message. The signs follow those. It says this, as they were working with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. This is so important. But guess what? You need to know what is the true message. This is what this section's about today. You, if somebody's speaking, and look, there's a lot of people speaking. You go out on YouTube and you go out on any kind of Insta this and Insta that. They got a lot of Insta everything going on. And they all, they're saying, I have, a, I have a word from this. I have a word. Of, everybody's got a word. My thing is, is it's not just that person of that word. Balaam had a word. But you don't follow Balaam. He had a true word. Am I wrong? No, he had a true word. Yahweh put it in his mouth. But all because he had that true word, then all of a sudden you follow Balaam? No, because guess what? He's going to lead you down the wrong path. Okay, this is why this is important. Okay, now let's go to, and we'll finish up on this section in Matthew 7, and we're going to go 15 through probably 23. Yeshua says this, he says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous, are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their signs. That's right. No, it's, it, you will reckon them, recognize them by their fruits, not their signs. This is why I just said that. I want everybody to grasp this. this is, guys, if we can't get this, then we're going to miss it in these end days. Because I'm telling you, when all hell's breaking loose and people are in panic mode, and there's a lot of people in panic mode today, and they don't know who to believe or who to listen to. I'm telling you this. This is just the way we are. None of us wants to give up sugar. Amen? I don't want to give up sugar. No, I just, I want a pill that I can eat whatever I want to, and I want to take a pill that can negate because my taste buds don't want to give up sugar. So what I'm telling you is, is this. Mankind doesn't want to give up their lifestyle. We don't want to give up, give up, give up, give up, give up, give up. We don't want to give up. We just want him to be a spiritual Santa Claus. That's what we want. We want him to give, 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 give. Even though i got more stuff in my closet than I can shake a stick at, the thing about it is I want more. Most of us has got sheds. We got more stuff in our shed. We had to bigger. And I got a, got a shed and I got to have a she shed. So and then you got to have this he shed and a she shed. Whatever happened to the people that had just a carport? Now we got he sheds and she sheds and we got everybody got sheds. I know what Doug says, Sandra, you stay out of my shed. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I know, you know, Sandra said, you ain't got to tell me that. I'm just saying. Is that, but this is what happens. Because we are people this way, I'm telling you, you are going to hear the voice of the one that's going to tell you what you want to hear. And the majority of the time, that is not the Torah. That's just the way it is, guys. It's just something to think about. So in verse 16, he says, You will recognize them by their fruit. Guys, you can't recognize people by their signs. Don't do that. I don't care if somebody comes and does whatever. You see somebody raise somebody from the dead, you got to know the fruit of the situation. You just do. 
Yeshua said this. This is Yeshua speaking here. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, and the diseased tree will bear bad fruit. He's, not, he's talking fruit here. He's not talking signs here. I'm, I'm just going here. You've got to lock in on this. If, people, if you cross the word fruit with the word sign, you're in trouble. Can't cross them two up. They're not the same. He knows how to say sign, and he knows how to say fruit. Okay? So he's telling you good trees bear good fruits. Bad trees bear bad fruit. But bad, but bad trees can bear good signs. That's crazy, but this is what he's telling you. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruit. He's telling you by their fruit, you're going to recognize them, not by the signs. Because verse 21 follows this. And he says this, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, or Master, Master, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And listen at what these people are saying to him. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. For on that day, many will say to me, Master, Master, did we not prophesy? In your name, not in Buddha, not in Hare Krishna, or not in, he said, in your name, in the name of who? In the name of Yeshua. That's right. Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? See, here, evil spirits, Yeshua, I know. Paul, I recognize, but who are you? But do you know that in the name of Yeshua, demons have to flee? Because it's by faith, guys. It's by faith. Yeshua has said, how many times your faith has made you whole? The lady who crawled in there and touched the hem of his garment, she said, your faith has made you whole. And then when the Roman soldier comes in here and says, my child is sick, would you come home? He's, I mean, would you heal my child? He said, well, let's go. He said, I don't have to. I'm not worthy. I'm just paraphrasing. But I'm a man under authority. I know I'm a man of authority and under authority. I can tell somebody to go and they go and come and they come. You can do the same thing. And he says, it's done to your child. Go home and be with your family. And he goes home and he said, your child lives. And what did he say? What hour? What time was it? He wanted to know. See, that's so if you're operating in his name, power is in the name. Power ain't in you. Power ain't in me. Power is in the name of Yeshua. And whenever somebody, this, this a wolf, can stand up in a conference and he can do whatever, but if he's invoking the name of Yeshua and somebody believes that in the name of Yeshua and has a miracle, guess what? It's Yeshua that's done it. It ain't the man on the stage. It ain't me on the stage either. Even if I have the fruit, of this Torah, it ain't me that heals you. Still ain't me. It's Yeshua that gets the glory. He's the one that's the healer. He's the one that got whipped for it. He's the one that died for it. He's the one that, that, that you know, took the beating for all of this. We, we have, all we have to do is, is we need to be what he called us to be. But we need to bear the fruit of it. We don't need to worry about the signs. That's why in here, I want the move of the Spirit, I want it genuine. That's why I tell people, if you're not operating in the fruit of the Spirit, do not operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Because if you do, you're operating in the wrong Spirit. I'm just telling you out front. You're in the wrong Spirit. Just the way it is. Does it mean that it can happen? Balaam did it. There's other people. The witch of Endor sort of happened. You know, the prophets of Saul, when Samuel, when Saul was not in a good place, he had prophets telling him good things. It, it, but it ended up not being good things in the end. But he said, on that day, many will say to me, Master, Master, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast demons in your name? And do many mighty works in your name? He didn't say yes. 
He says, then I will declare to them, I never knew you. What does it mean that I never knew you? I never had a relationship with you. I never had an, as Adam knew Eve, I never had an intimate relationship with you. That's what he was saying. I don't know you. I'm not, we, we're not intimate with one another. What you're doing is, is you're invoking, you know what he's saying here? You're a Nicolaitan. This is what the Nicolaitans were doing. Because they were going after, after things of pleasure and invoking the name of Yeshua. They were doing both. And Yeshua said to two of the congregations, I hate the what? The works of the Nicolaitans. Because this is what they were teaching, the teachings of Balaam. It was a mixture. But he said, then I will declare, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of what? When you follow the commandments according to Deuteronomy... It says, when you do these commandments, it says, you will be blessed. If you don't do these commandments, you will be cursed. Remember the blessing and the curses? See, fruit is what we look for, not signs. But here's the thing. Whenever the fruit is in you and me, expect the signs to follow don't be afraid of the signs. Don't be afraid of prophecy. Don't be afraid of tongues. Don't be afraid of laying on of hands. Don't be afraid of these things because He gives these. These are power gifts. For those who walk in the fruit of the Spirit, He gives us the power to manifest the works of the Spirit. That's what He does. And this is what was happening in His day. Guys, I'm going to close with this. That whole region knew Paul. How did they know him? We're going to pick that up next week. How they knew him. I'm just going to give you a little. They knew him because of what the evil spirit said. Because the evil spirit said this. And they all were watching because this man who was demon possessed. We're going to read it. Put a whooping on those boys. Said something. Yeshua, I know. Can you imagine? Paul's out there ministering the gospel. His own said that they, they became stubborn and didn't want to do the way. So he had to leave and he had to take the message because he was told to do that to the Gentiles. And he takes it not only to his brothers, to the nations of Israel, but also to the Gentiles. But can you understand? But a seven-day revival or a three-day seminar is not going to bring the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. It ain't going to do it. You can get some feel good and it's okay to have some feel good and have some encouragement. Understand the difference. Two years daily. You give me a two years daily, then let's talk. Amen? Two years daily, then we'll talk. Then, let's see what's happening. I can tell you what's happening. Even the evil spirits will recognize who you are. And when you walk around, they're going to keep their mouth shut, and they're going to go to the side. And they're going to go in that cave where he belongs because he don't want to leave the host that he's in. That's, that is, so we need to be real. I'm just talking about being real, guys. Being real. Being real is, is what, do, what effort do we put out to be able to have the power of Elohim in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives so powerful that even the Holy Spirits recognize who you are and they back off. I'm talking about evil spirit. Did I say? I mean, not holy, but the evil spirits. When the evil spirits can recognize you and they back off. That's where we want to be because this is where we're headed in the future is a very evil situation in the end times. They feared, the evil spirit feared who? Yeshua that was in Paul. That's who they feared. They didn't fear Paul. They're not going to fear you. He's not supposed, but is the Holy Spirit, is Yeshua so bright and powerful in us that they recognize that? This is where this is going, but here's where you got to be careful. You have to know the fruit of the person, not the signs of the person. And that's what this part one was about today is, is it's very important because, man, we are people that likes to watch a circus. 
We like to see the wild things happening and people blowing on people and then falling down and doing all this stuff. You know, what is the fruit of the people ministering? And that's the key. Amen? Did I make it clear enough? I hope so. Amen. All right, well, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this portion here. And I pray, Father, that we will be people that will be... We need your operation, your spirits in our life. There's no doubt. But, Father, I just pray that we would be a people that would be quick to hear, slow to speak. We need your discernment. Do not judge things before the time. And, Father, that we know that all good gifts come from above, not from us as people, whether sheep or wolves. So, Father, I just pray that in these times that we're in, not approaching, but already in and is happening around us, Father, we need the spirit of discernment to be able to discern those things. But your word is already given to us. And so, Father, I pray that the fruits of the spirit will be so much in the forefront of our minds and our hearts that we will just have it, Father, just impregnated in us, that it would just give birth to your spirit in a great way. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you. Bless your people today in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Thank you, guys. All right, all together. Sound the great shofar for our freedom. Raise the banner to gather our exiles and gather us together from the four corners of the earth. Praised are you, O Yahweh, who gathers in the dispersed of your people, Israel. <laughs> All right, prayer for the United States of America all together. Abba, Father, giver of life, we pray for and entrust the United States of America to your loving care. You are the rock on which this nation was founded. You alone are the true source of life, liberty, and blessings. We cry out for this land to be reclaimed for your glory. May it be that you will dwell among your people. Send your spirit to touch and open the hearts of our nation and its leaders to seek your will and your ways. Grant us the ability and courage to stand for the truth, and may we be that righteous nation you have called us to be. We ask this in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Prayer for the peace of Jerusalem all together. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of Yahweh. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem that is built as a city that is compact together, to which the tribes go up, even the tribes of Yahweh, an ordinance for Israel, to give thanks to the name of Yahweh, for there thrones were set for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, May peace be within you. For the sake of the house of Yahweh our Elohim, I will seek your good. Amen. The ironic benediction. Yivarecha ka'adonai v'yishmarecha Ya'er adonai p'navalecha v'ikunecha Yisa adonai p'navalecha May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift His countenance upon you and give you shalom, peace. And it's time for the Kiddush, the blessing over the wine. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Borei Pri Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And the blessing over the bread. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzei lechem min ha'amet. Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth, and for giving us, Yeshua the Messiah, who said, 
I am the bread of life. It is Shabbat. Thank the Lord. It is Shabbat.